Um, and now I'm joined with a full pack of new people. On my right here is Daniel Coende. You're the director of Coende Informetrics in Spain. Yeah. You're actually an expert on out-of-home measurement. Next to him is John Collius. You are the senior vice president of um, decision analysts, right? Correct. And both of you submitted a paper here at Congress, which will be presented later. And on the far end of the table is Shoot Kornsa. We've seen you on SMR TV before last year. You're uh, the CMI manager, at, global CMI manager at Heineken. And as I said before, we want to explore the topic of big data a little bit. But before we dive into it, we hear so much about it. John, could you explain us a little bit, what is big data? What do we mean when we talk about big data in the sense of market research? Well, traditionally, big data is, talk, is uh, defined by the quantity of the data, the rapidity and speed with which we receive the data, and by the, the velocity, you know, the, 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 the immensity of it. But it, it also goes into social media. One second, John. Seems your mic is kind of bugging you, so uh, just talk in this one like I'm doing. It also goes into social media and many new sources of data. So big data is really defined by the, the data itself. It's combining sources, right? It's the amount and the combination of that. Exactly. All right. Um, now, Shoot, I've learned that you have some experience with uh, some big data projects in Heineken. What, what have you done in that area? Uh, we have been uh, using external data sources uh, in order to estimate uh, some uh, the potential of flavors uh, for cider in uh, different uh, several countries. So instead of first starting doing research regarding which flavor might be potential, we first analyzed sources which were already available and then based upon that we screened the relevant sources for specific markets in order to be more focused when we were doing uh, the when we were measuring uh, the potential of uh, flavors in markets but you could call this use data, use existing data, yet we're calling it a big data project. What made it a big data project in this case? Uh, it made it big data because one of the sources we used were from an, an, an other beverage uh, category which uh, contained 527 uh, flavor sources, uh, 150 markets, uh, so that which made it quite huge uh, to, to deal with. Uh, uh, but And then the other element which was in it is that we combined several sources, so and based on then, and then we had to uh, find the right way how to link these several sources, which make it also quite challenging. And the third uh, part is, which is coming from other big data sources, where our data might not have been such big, but was that uh, we could uh, estimate missing data, so in some markets not a complete data set was available, based upon pattern recognition uh, via machine learning. Okay. Wow, that sounds very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me get to Daniel in a second, because you're actually a qual guy. You're uh, experienced <laughs> in out-of-home measurement. But obviously, we now know that we can link uh, street address data with IP data. Uh, is any of that happening in the out-of-home measurement at the moment? Because I could imagine that if I'm advertising outdoor and I can then see sales go up in that area, that could be potential opportunities. What's, what's going on there? Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, that's one of the main sources, really interesting. Um, most of our projects are have to deal with even the people that is able to see the, the advertising. That's the first step. And many advertisers are also linking with sales because they have the internal data. But our plan is not only do it in where the big data is available, like in US or in Europe, but the real the challenge is to get that big data through the world. I get it in Nigeria, get it in some countries that they are, have we said before, with challenging infrastructures. So we are looking for these global metrics. Big data really can provide, finally, global metrics that our clients and market research are always looking for. So yes, uh, technology is providing, finally, this, this step. And, and what are you doing, actually, to, to get to this data? What, well, what, when you say we're looking for, what, yeah. what, what does that mean? We find the solution using satellite technology images, uh, high resolution images that are constantly taken all over the world. Uh, with When I mean high resolution, I mean 30 centimeters resolution of uh, 350 uh, square miles, no, square kilometers. That's not big data, that's big resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's <laughs> 100 petabytes. Yeah. That's big, big data. Yeah. And you, can, you are able to identify all the cars, type, orientation, if they are parked, if they are moving, what is the speed. And not only one shot, you have thousands of shots of one single city, so you can identify what, where is the traffic, how is the volume, how they move. 
And then the second step is, as you said, we have another source, sorbates, like that we are used to, and we mix them with that fusion, we have all that information. Uh, how many people is going through this street? What is their age? If they are, uh, what, they, what they want to buy or what they see? And if uh, they are interesting and relevant for our advertisers. For advertisers, yeah. yeah. And I, I, see, I see you nodding, John, because actually in your paper you also talk about this, right? Combining right. the potential of big data with qualitative. Can, can you explore a little bit on that? Right. What I, what is one of the ways we can think of the big data is the opportunities for a combination of methodologies, combination of technologies, combination of even marketing functions, right? So, so taking survey data, combining it uh, by geocoding, for example, and combining it with external data that is based on geography. All of these things are possible, and it prov provides new opportunities for, and new tools to great, get greater insights into health businesses. Yeah, because your subtitle of your paper is predicting the, un uh, uh, the unobserved. So, so uh, tell us a little bit, what, what did you Well, observe? survey data, uh, measures attitudes and preferences. And big data, just because it's big data, doesn't necessarily have everything in it, right? So there are things that are unobserved. So I think that uh, survey data still provides an important role. The question is, how do you combine it with, with uh, the big data? And, and I think that the unobserved things is something that the big data can make use of. And I think that the, the techniques in big data analytics are things that survey data can make use of as well. So there's a win-win situation right there. Using win -win. it all. All right. So win-win. Is this is this all happy news, shoot? Because uh, I've heard some. Uh, hey, well, just no, we big data. Big data. I think that is an. Um, it's replacing uh, what you can measure with big data is behavior. It's or it's it's either it's transport behavior or it's media uh, behavior. But like what John was saying, it will not tell you the why. Mm -hmm. So for the why, you always uh, need to do additional market research. In that sense, big data is sometimes overestimated. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the other element which I foresee for the, the role of market research function uh, are twofold. One is that there needs to come more expertise in order to link different uh, sources in a quite agile way uh, together. That's one. And the other is uh, big data is uh, not complete. So we need also people who are able to judge the quality and also have the guts to make that judgment about the quality. And, uh, and, and you say that's that's <coughs> the new task of market research? I, see that, uh, you see, I see that a big role for market research because we, uh, market research is dealing with business issues, we are dealing with solutions, meanwhile data scientists they are only looking for, for patterns and uh, whatever but they are no, they are not so focused on the on business the truth, issues to, right? to analyze. What does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? When okay. what should we do with it? Okay, so, so basically we're identifying a first potential risk of focusing too much on the data sets, right? We, we don't know context, we don't know the motivation. What other, what other cautions do we want to give our view, view, uh, viewers who embark on the big data journey? Hmm. Well, it's big data right now looks like the holy grail, exactly. and it's not. No, that's why we're one part of the solution. What it is, what it isn't. And, and in fact, one of the biggest issues is normally they are skew, and they are biased because... Uh, and the people, data? Yeah. So we have to be very careful on that. And then we it's well, our... Just before we move about, about, why would you say the data is biased? Uh, for example, uh, typical on our world, typical thing is, oh, let's use mobile operator data. Uh, to are know where people are. Yeah. Very important but in out of home measurement. For example, right? that's yeah. on our case. Or let's use uh, weights uh, to do the traffic analysis. Yes. But the problem is that weights, what tells you is the speed of the cars, and, and if there is doesn't move fast, it means that there's a traffic jam there. But it doesn't relate to the amount of cars. So it may be a small st street or a big street, a big highway. So but in some places they will start trying to use that. So it's a big, big data, but it's not really relevant for the type of use. And, and, also and, I, and I guess the risk to combine your both points is if people in business are getting all excited about all this data, we need the market researchers to, to warn to them yes. about the bias, mm -hmm. the Perfect. why, the yeah, context. Right. Okay, the Completed. great new role. Yeah. Yeah. What else, John? Well, I think another way we can, a, th a risk, is that we forget about some of the basics of scientific research, you know, experimental design, those kinds of things. Uh, when we talk about big data, the theme is to take lots of data, crunch it into an algorithm, and produce a prediction. Yeah. Well, where where is I mean, can we really measure what we want to measure when we have no experimental design behind it? 
many things we can, uh, but I think that we need to be careful with that. Yeah. And again, that's where the, the insights manager and the research agency should step in. Right. I think there's a great opportunity for uh, collaboration between the traditional marketing research groups and what now is compartmentalized and isolated in the big data group, which is, and they're not talking to each other in our corporate governance and structure, and we, we should be. Exactly, yeah. because that's what I was asking. Uh, should the, the, the data guys, yeah. are they in your department, or is that another island in the big corporations? That's, Lucio, that's, that's an uh, not internal, because we have... Uh, uh, big data sources also become much more uh, accessible, and that is IT who are dealing with that. That's and, what I thought. Uh, and then from an, uh, how should we then um, collaborate? Uh, and now we should collaborate with them together. Um, uh, they uh, do not see the need to work together with a market research agency because they think it's our data, so we can analyze it. So you need to be a bit handy to uh, create a uh, relationship uh, with other uh, stakeholders as well within uh, the company. Uh, or you need to get a position that whenever there is done an analysis that someone from CMI or market research should be involved. And, and have you been able to establish that position within your role? Uh, we are working on it. All right, because it's funny, it's a nice segue into uh, 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 one of the topics in the third show today where we talk about client-side researchers and literally this, like what is the role of the insights manager and where are they in relation to other people on data. Okay, so we see the need for market researchers to step up, to validate the assumptions, to give context and why, to, to define the biases in data. Quite some good learnings and, and, and takeaways from uh, for, for our viewers. Anything else we need to add when people hear big data in their corporation or in their environment? And you say, hey, market researcher, pay attention. Yeah, I would like to add something that's about the overestimation of uh, social media. So ah. we have now been talking more or less about big data, which is more about behavioral, etc. Data, data which we can analyze. But social is and, obviously but a but big social, part of but big social data. Is also mentioned as uh, as a big data, and uh, uh, within our industry in which we are then, then selling beverages uh, to consumers. Uh, we are also confronted with internal stakeholders, like for example our procurement uh, manager who says from, why should we do all these researches? All data is for free available uh, with on, 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 on the internet, so <laughs> why should we spend many money on that? And uh, that is completely not, uh, uh, in that sense, social media is not delivering you added value for specific measures. It can give you com some insights where you no were not aware of, but to, get to use it for structural measurement is not there. Let's, let's take that one to Daniel for a second, because I think in your paper, you reference social media as one of the key uh, additional sources to measure out of home, right? Because it's a very big proof of people seeing out of, out of home measure, or outdoor advertising. Yeah, in fact, that's an added value after just like a cross validation to see, uh, but normally that's also the intensity and the effectiveness of that campaign. So uh, there are many studies saying, oh, with only one billboard, it really hit. And or with only one, th or, or just the opposite, with 1,000 billboards, with a bad advertising, it doesn't shake the tree. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's normally social media, it's a one step forward, one step ahead, above uh, audience measurement to validate the effectiveness. But it would never replace. And, no. and yeah, but there you're talking it. about, uh, you're talking here, about, I was talking about uh, the way our brands are perceived, and that is uh, in general, so to measure brand health, for example, yep. uh, where you could use more uh, uh, social media for, is for uh, evaluation of your marketing uh, assessments, of uh, your marketing efforts. And that's where you're referring to, yep. is that uh, that is more exactly. logical link. Yep. Separate things. Yep. Yep. Good job at that. Very good. John, anything to add as a learning for our viewers? We well, think I, we covered most of the basics. Uh, we have covered most of the basics. I, I would say that um, you know, social media, all of the different sources that we have with big data, mobile tracking, satellite imagery, and so forth, uh, all of these are things that are provide additional potential predictors that we can use. So we need to keep it within the context of of uh, either additional tools, additional data, not the answer to exactly. everything. The answer is that yeah. it's a tool. Well, and if you want to learn more about that, I should refer you guys to uh, 5.20 New Orleans time on Channel 2. That's where you present your paper. Shoot, we'll see you back tomorrow morning at 5 past 9, I think, where you talk about ads measurement on Channel 2 as well. And Daniel, you'll present your paper on Channel 1 tomorrow at 9.25. So you guys have to pick yeah. which one uh, you have to see. Um, 
thank you very much for uh, sharing these insights. I think there were some great nuggets of information and some great valuable lessons for our viewers here. Thanks thank very you. much and enjoy the Congress. Thank, thank you. you.